one, start. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for what is our first presentation on natural resources officers to protect and conserve. Any questions that you have during this presentation can be added to the question and answer section. We will also be covering some frequently asked questions throughout this presentation. If you have any recommendations for future presentations or would like more information on a particular topic, we ask that you also post those in the question and answer section. We plan to offer additional live events that cover specific aspects and positions within the Natural Resources Officer classification. Natural Resources Officers are responsible for protecting the people that visit our beautiful facilities, protecting the natural resources that draw those people to our facilities, and conserving the natural resources of our facilities for future generations. My name is Caleb Breckeisen, and I'm a Natural Resources Officer Lieutenant with the Division of Parks and Watercraft. I grew up in southern Richland County, not far from Malabar Farm State Park, and a few minutes from Mohegan State Park. I grew up enjoying the outdoors, but was not immediately drawn to a career in natural resources law enforcement. I spent a year after high school at Mount Union College pursuing a degree in early childhood education. The best part about Mount Union was the fact that they placed you in the classroom your freshman year. I quickly realized after that placement that early childhood education was not for me. The summer after my freshman year, I started work in maintenance at Mohegan State Park. I got to interact with the park officers there and began to show an interest in that career path. That following year, I enrolled at Hawking College. I was still torn between pursuing a career as a wildlife officer or as a park officer. I graduated from Hawking College in 2003 and enrolled in the police academy at North Central State College in Mansfield. At North Central State College, a few of my instructors were park officers. They made an impression on me and were excellent ambassadors for the agency. After graduating, I began working for the Lamville Police Department as an auxiliary officer. It provided some excellent experience. In the fall of 2004, I was hired by then the Division of Parks as a park officer. I was extremely proud of the position and the uniform. And today I'm proud of the position and uniform as a natural resources officer. As a park officer, I had the privilege to work at Finley State Park, Mohegan State Park, Punderson State Park, and Allen Creek State Park. The diversity of the park officer position is what I enjoyed the most. Each day as an officer was the opportunity to be different from the day prior. As diverse as the job of a park officer was, it pales in comparison to the position now. The natural resources officer could be patrolling on a vessel today and be on an ATV tomorrow. Each day in the life of a natural resources officer brings new and exciting opportunities. In addition to the diversity and everyday patrol functions, the division hosts special events throughout the year that we send officers to assist. These events include the Hocking Hills Winter Hike and 4th of July fireworks that are held across the state. These special events allow our officers to see other facilities and network with officers that they don't routinely work around. As an officer and now Lieutenant, I look forward to working these special events and interacting with other officers I do not routinely see. So as we look to how we got to where we are today, when I started with the Division of Parks in 2004, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources contained six law enforcement divisions. The Division of Watercraft, the Division of Wildlife, the Division of Forestry, the Division of Natural Areas and Preserves, the Division of Parks, and the Department Office of Law Enforcement. In 2012, the Division of Natural Areas and Preserves officers were combined with the Division of Parks. Then, in 2013, the Division of Forestry officers were also combined with parks. Finally, in 2016, the Division of Parks and the Division of Watercraft agencies were merged into the Division of Parks and Watercraft, and the Natural Resources Officer classification was created. Although we had authority on these properties prior to combining, it became one of our primary responsibilities once we combined. So as a natural resources officer, you have many responsibilities, and a few of them are maritime law enforcement. So the Division of Parks and Watercraft is the primary enforcement agency for all maritime law enforcement in the state of Ohio. Also as a part of the maritime law enforcement, it includes search and rescue. Our officers are often called on to search for missing persons on waters, lakes, streams. We are also trained in swift water rescue, as a watercraft, as a water a parks and watercraft officer, you will be presenting education such as the Ohio Voter Education course. 
You will patrol park, forests, natural areas, and scenic river lands. We are also responsible for wildland forest fire investigation within the Fire Protection Zone of Ohio. We conduct timber theft investigations on public and private property if called upon by an assisting agency. At Hocking Hills, we have our own rope rescue team. We have canines trained in cadaver and narcotic detection. And we enforce ATV and UTV trail use on forestry property. So our authority, the Division of Parks and Watercraft, provides law enforcement on parklands, forestry lands, natural area and preserves land, and scenic rivers. In addition to the land mass, we are also the primary watercraft enforcement agency in the state, as I mentioned earlier. So when we look at the facilities we patrol, Ohio State Parks encompass 115,779 acres of land. Within Ohio State Parks, we have 9,087 campsites, we have 506 cabins, 600, I'm sorry, nine lodges, and 685 lodge rooms. Also within those areas, we have 1,308 miles of trails. Our waterways in Ohio, including Lake Erie and the Ohio River, 2.5 million surface acres of water. We have 566,454 registered vessels, including power boats and paddle vessels. In natural areas and preserves, we have 14,132 acres. On forest property, we have 201,695 acres of land, 223 campsites, and 856 miles of multi-use trails. And when I say multi-use, I mean bridal trails, hiking trails, and ATV and UTV trails, and also some snowmobile trails in certain areas. Excuse me. On scenic river property, we have 2,672 acres of land. So what does this all add up to? Parks and Watercraft is responsible for patrolling a total of 334,278 acres of land. For comparison, the city of Columbus, the largest in Ohio, is 144,051 acres. If the land we patrolled was a city, we would be the 10th largest city in the United States, slightly edging out Phoenix, Arizona. This does not include any water surface acres. When water acreage is included, we would be the fifth largest city in the United States, edging out Jacksonville, Florida. Some of the land we patrol does allow public hunting and most of our waterways allow fishing. This is a good time to discuss the difference between natural resources officers and wildlife officers. Wildlife officers enforce the Ohio Revised Code and Administrative Code relative to wildlife resources property owned or administered by the Division of Wildlife and Ohio Department of Natural Resources and stream pollution and littering. Natural Resources Officer's primary responsibility is to enforce the Ohio Revised Code and Administrative Code relative to lands controlled by the divisions outlined previous and all boating laws. The Natural Resource Officer will experience many of the same calls for service as a municipal police officer, just on a different scale. Although we patrol the land mass of a large city, we do not have the established population. The majority of the people we interact with are recreational users visiting our area for the first, or I'm sorry, are visiting our area for the day or maybe the weekend. That being said, our overnight facilities are large villages on a busy weekend with the amount of guests we host. The enforcement role of a natural resources officer can vary based off the facility they are assigned. Our Lake Erie offices are heavy on watercraft enforcement and operation of large vessels. It is a similar atmosphere if you're assigned to the Ohio River. In contrast, our other facilities are more of a combination of land and water patrol. The reason I bring that up is that some folks are not drawn to one aspect of the job. So it is a very varied schedule and you will not be doing one thing all the time. What you have in front of you now is one of our canine units. That is NRO Nicole Gardner and her canine gunner, and they are assigned out of the Hocking Hills office. So I want to talk now about our enforcement districts and how our officers are broke up across the state. The Division of Parks and Watercraft is broken into five patrol districts within the state. Those districts are Central, Northwest, Northeast, Southeast, and Southwest. Each district is then further broke down by work units. Every district except Central at this time has three work units. 
work units within that district are responsible for all LE functions within that geographical boundary. Boundaries can and are crossed to provide the best service to the public. So now I want to go into our specific hiring process. And I want to mention right off is that it's important that you know the state of Ohio is an equal employment opportunity employer and does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, gender, gender identity, or expression, national origin, military status, disability, age, genetic information, sexual orientation, or caregiver status in making employment related decisions about an individual. We want the most diverse, qualified group of applicants that we can get. So when we decide to make, or I'm, excuse me, when we decide we're gonna hire, we will post those positions. And one of the first things that we're gonna decide is if we are going to hire cadet positions like we are now, or if we're gonna hire commissioned officer positions. So when we are hiring cadets, and again, we are now, we will not require a commissioned officer that applies and is accepted to attend the academy a second time. That is one of the frequently asked questions that I get. You will not be required to attend academy a second time as long as you are current. If you notice in the question and answer section, there are two links there. So that first link is to our current posting and the second link is to our hiring page. Um, I'll discuss that a little more when we get towards the end, but I wanna make you aware of that now. So once the posting is up, we will begin accepting applications. These applications are screened for minimum qualifications, and I cannot stress enough to you that when you address minimum qualifications in an application that you do not assume anything. If it asks you if you are 21 years of age, even though you listed your date of birth somewhere else, tell us that you're 21 years of age. Be concise and explain how you meet each minimum qualification. Once applications are screened for the minimum qualifications, we will invite you to a fitness test. Our fitness tests are based off the Cooper standards, and these can be found on our hiring page. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when we post, we put post cadet positions and we post commission positions. So the fitness test that you will have to pass for a cadet is the 30th percentile. If we are hiring officers, commissioned officers, the fitness level you have to pass at is 50th percentile. As mentioned earlier, we are hiring cadets now and you will be required to pass at the 30th percentile. So after fitness testing, we will compile all of those persons that have passed and we will set up and invite you to a structured interview. The interview is in front of a panel of two to three persons, which include representatives from the Department of Natural Resources, Human Resources, and lieutenants, captains, and LE administrator from Parks and Watercraft. All applicants are asked the same questions and, and scored in a consistent manner. Also, as a part of that structured interview, we will ask you to fill out a person personal history statement. Once the structured interview is set up, during that time frame, we try to do these at the same time, you will also complete your swim test. So the swim test is a minimum qualification and you must be able to continuously swim 300 yards in 12 minutes or less, excuse me. Continuously tread water for five minutes and perform a surface dive and retrieve an object in less than five feet of water from a treading water position. So once the structured interview and the swim test are complete, those persons that pass the swim test and score high enough to, uh, I'm sorry, that score high enough on a structured interview will be invite or will go to a background phase. Backgrounds begin with a review of your personal history statement that you turned in during your interview. I cannot stress again enough, be honest and forthcoming when you fill out your personal history statement. Do not attempt to conceal anything. Any attempts to conceal and mislead will lead to your automatic removal from the process. Well, oftentimes, when somebody fills that out, they think something is a big deal and it's not. Be truthful, be honest. As a part of the background, you will receive a polygraph test, a psychological test, and a medical test. Those persons that make it through the background phase will then go to a department review process where representatives from Parks and Watercraft, the Division of Wildlife, and Office of Law, Department Office of Law Enforcement will review every background and decide who gets to proceed and does not. 
Those that proceed will get a letter stating their start date and those that do not make it will receive a letter saying they did not. So let's touch, I touched a little bit above on the minimum qualifications, but I want to go to it again. So in minimum qualifications for an NRO, completion of an associate core program in a natural resources area, that it could be parks and recreation, forestry, fisheries, wildlife, environmental, conservation biology, or criminal justice law enforcement, or 18 months training and experience in a natural resources area. This is another frequently asked questions that question that I get is the education piece um, as it meets the minimum quals. Now you do have if you don't have the entire completion of associate core program, but you have a certain amount of time training and experience, we can combine those to make you eligible for the position. And I would encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions about the education piece, because to be honest, it can be confusing. My information will be at the bottom of this uh, presentation, and I encourage you to reach out to me. If I cannot answer your question, I will get it in front of HR and I will get you an answer. But returning to the minimum qualifications, you must have a valid driver's license and you must be 21 years of age upon completion of the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy. You must be able to continuously swim 300 yards in 12 minutes, continuously tread water for five minutes and perform a surface dive and retrieve objects in less than five feet of water from a treading water position. And again, when you fill out your application, make sure you explain how you meet every minimum qualification. So when we look at the Division of Parks and Watercraft Natural Resources Officer Career Ladder, you'll see that we start out with an officer cadet, which is what we're hiring now, 15 positions. We have 104 natural resources officers at this time. We have 19 natural resources sergeants. We have eight natural resource investigators. We have 15 natural resource lieutenants, and the lieutenants are the ones that supervise the work units that are in within the districts. And we have four captains, and captains oversee lieutenants, or in my situation, other responsibilities as assigned. Right now we have one major, but that position is vacant. And we also have a law enforcement administrator that oversees our entire operation. So the next slide you're going to see is the natural resources officer core values. And those core values are professionalism, adaptability, safety, service, and duty. I encourage you to apply these to your own. I, I encourage you to look at these and ask yourself what these mean to you. Because at some point you may be asked this, especially um, if you are applying with us, because I think it's important to self re reflect, especially as it applies to these core values. And we take these serious professionalism, ad adaptability, safety, service and duty. So we are currently seeking applicants until January 15th of 2021. And again, if you look in the published data on your live Q&A, you'll see that that first link is to the posting and that second link is to the hiring page. And right before we show you a recruitment video, this photo that you're seeing on your screen right now, this is your office. So this is a sunset at Deer Creek State Park. And what better office can you have? And now we're going to show you a brief recruiting video. I know I wanted to do this job since I was a little kid. 911, where is your emergency? The Ohio Department of Natural Resources keep people safe on the water, the land. And all the trails. There are some days where I never see the inside of an office. I couldn't leave ODNR. He couldn't get me away from here. It certainly keeps you on your toes. It's a wonderful experience. If you want a career in law enforcement and you can handle the elements, this job's for you. We live by our core values. Duty, safety, service, 
adaptability, and professionalism. I've got a profound love for this job. Hello, I'm Doug Young, Chief of the Office of Law Enforcement with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. If you think you have what it takes to serve as a natural resource officer, I look forward to meeting you. To apply, please visit careers.ohio.gov. So again, I thank you for joining us this evening. Um, my contact information is on the screen. If you have any questions as it relates, you know, after this presentation, by all means, feel free to call me, email me. Uh, looking at the question and answer, one of the questions is, are all cadet positions for Franklin County? So the answer is it, it, yes. So the way that it's set up is that the cadet position is assigned to Franklin County because that's where the uh, academy is held. So if you come in as a commissioned officer, we will assign you to a field location after approximately five weeks of training. But as far as the cadet position goes, yes, it is assigned to Franklin County. But that does not mean that during that time frame you'll be working in Franklin County unless you're going to the State Highway Patrol Academy. So it looks like that's the only question we have right now. Um, and again, I thank you for tuning in. And as we proceed and, and create some more um, presentations, we will get them published and out. But again, looking at the screen in front of you, if you have any any questions, I can't uh, emphasize, emphasize this enough. Please email me um, and, and please call. I'm sorry, another question just came in. What classes do I need to focus on in high school for this career? I'm currently a freshman. Um, so at the high school level, I would say focus on uh, classes like in the biology field, um, science related, and that'll give you a good leg up if you go into uh, you know, something that's natural resource related as far as the college level goes. Uh, if you don't have a great interest in that aspect of it, I would look at uh, you know, something as far as criminal justice goes. I know some of the um, vocational schools that are um, connected to high schools, they do offer some some uh, public safety courses, so that may be an option. Uh, otherwise, focus on the courses when you get to the college level. So uh, work towards your criminal justice degree. So another question that came in. So after completing academy training, are you stationed in a different county? Yes, you are. So the positions that we are filling are statewide and the decision has not been made yet on to the exact facilities that they are going to be filled at. But as that information becomes available, we will make it public. Um, another question is, what are some sample polygraph questions? So this is this is another good question. So I can tell you from my polygraph, I got really worked up for no reason. Um, the polygraph is straightforward. They're not trying to mix you up and get you to admit to something um, that you did wrong. But some sample um, questions specifically, they're gonna ask you about any criminal acts that are undetected. They're gonna ask you about your driving record, uh, things like that. It's not a gotcha situation, okay? Now, that being said, if you try to mislead them on some of those basic questions, they are going to dig a little deeper and, and ask questions that are very specific to what they think you are um, not being truthful on. So, what does career advancement look like? So right, right now in the Division of Parks and Watercraft, we are analyzing um, how we are going to utilize our sergeants in the future. So right now, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer to this question. Um, and if you wrote this, feel free to email me and I can explain that a little better. But right now, um, 
not knowing what is going to happen with the role of our sergeants, I don't have a good answer for that right now. Thank you, Jonah. Jonah said no questions, but thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. What what sectors will cadets be assigned to? Could it be any of the five? Yes, so at this time, again, um, not knowing 100% certain where we're gonna uh, put these positions, yes, you could be assigned to any of the five districts that we have within our state. Now, that being said, you will be giving, once we identify where we need 15 positions, we will canvas you and have you give us our top your top selections. So just because three people are all want the same area we're not necessarily going to just give it to the first person we will actually do um, a selection process that will utilize typically it's your social security number and we'll go by that order uh, another question are there any recommended schools colleges to get the education for the qualifications that's a good question so to answer your question it would really depend on which career or which path you want to go um, many schools uh, local local regional colleges offer some sort form of criminal justice uh, program now when you go to the natural resources area that's a little trickier. I know Ohio State offers one, Hawking College, um, I believe Rio Grande, but you're a little more limited on your options when you look at the education piece as it relates to the natural resources field. But like I said, if you're interested in um, the criminal justice path, most of your local regional um, community college will, will offer something like that. So do you get an option on parks? possible for placement or is it random? Yes. So I answered that just a little bit ago, but to reiterate, yes, once we identify um, where the vacancies are, you will be given the option to give us your top picks. Good question. Is there a set date for physical fitness testing? Yes. So that was actually uh, discussed today and it will be updated on our website and I'm pulling up my calendar now. Um, let me see here. We are looking at setting fitness for February 8th through the 20th. And again, if you go to our hiring page, I don't think it's been updated yet, um, but the posting and the hiring page will be updated with that information soon. Um, what we have not set yet as it relates to fitness are all of the locations, but our goal is to have multiple locations in each district and offer uh, a very flexible schedule, including daytime hours, um, evening hours, and then even weekends so we can accommodate as many people as possible. Um, any idea where the job openings will be, excuse me, once graduated from the academy? If somebody wants to stay in the Columbus area, are there usually openings? So good question. And uh, at this time, if if you would, if you would email me, that way I have your email contact. And as soon as I have the information on where those locations are, I can get that out to you. Um, I would encourage you to apply for the position um, as opposed to waiting to see where those um, offerings or the uh, positions will be placed. That way you are in the process regardless. Are the chances of getting hired as hard for parks and watercraft as it is for the Division of Wildlife? So it's a competitive process. So that's a good question and it is a competitive process. Um, we, we frequently lose roughly 50% pretty much right off the bat, um, just due to minimum qualifications. Would I say it's as hard? Um, yes, I would, and I would say it's, a, it's just as competitive. Um, but again, don't let that discourage you from um, putting in for it. So another question, I have two associates, one in human resources and one in applied health science. Would I still be an eligible candidate? So without knowing a little more, um, I would like to know your work history on that as well. If you would be able to send me an email or call me, um, I would I would like to discuss that further with you because just based off the HR degree and the applied health science, um, without knowing the coursework, I can't answer that right now. But please contact me and I will help you as much as I can.
Um, any any positions at Grand Lake St. Mary's? So we offer transfers and one of the officers that is currently assigned to Grand Lake St. Mary's, they are interested in transferring. So there is a good possibility that we will have a position at Grand Lake. If you get assigned to an area that you don't really want to go, is there a chance to transfer to an area you want to be? Absolutely. As I just mentioned um, with the question about Grand Lake, we do canvas our officers and give them the opportunity to transfer. Now, if there is no opening at that facility, um, you know, we, we can't just move you. But if 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 someone is is retiring or um, if they're wanting to transfer to another facility, absolutely. We allow our officers to transfer. Um, another question, will the region of the vacant positions be posted before the applications are due? Yes, I fully expect those to be out. But again, uh, even if they're not, I would encourage you to apply. And if it ends up that it's not a, a facility you want to work out of, you can withdraw your application. Is determination a quality you look for? Yes, it is. Yes, absolutely. What shift does an officer generally work? Good question. So this is one of those that it's going to vary slightly by the facility you are assigned. And the reason I say that is um, some facilities that are more, let's uh, let's use a Lake Erie um, water unit as an example. So the Cleveland I office might not run people as late as um, the Geneva office, which is in the same work unit. Geneva has a campground. Um, Geneva has a lodge, so they're going to run shifts later. So you know, a shift at Geneva might be 4P to 2A. That being said, um, we allow our lieutenants that are over that oversee the uh, work units to schedule their officers how they see fit. So you might be working a 10 hour shift or an eight hour shift, depending on the facility you work at. Um, and I know this time of the year um, in the winter time, generally when we get a little slower, uh, most of our facilities are on 10 hour shifts. Um, have you heard anything about a possible opening at John Bryan State Park? I have not. Um, but if we get that information and we get we'll get it updated on the hiring page and possibly also at the posting page. Um, another question, is there a certain distance you must live within your posted position? Yes and no. So if you have a take home vehicle, um, I believe the distance is 40 or 45 miles. Typically, we don't assign a take home vehicle to every person, so it that distance would likely not apply. All right, well, we will give it a couple more minutes to see if there's any other questions. And like I said, if I couldn't answer your uh, question fully, please feel free to send me an email. Um, OK, here's another question. What is the work schedule why, while in cadet program? So if you are working as a, if you are attending the State Higher Patrol Academy, you are going to be on their schedule. Um, and typically what that schedule will be is you will start roughly at about 6 a.m. every morning um, doing PT and then you'll have classroom all day and then you will have PT parade um, and some other um, items. Now, I did not attend the State Heart Patrol Academy and I'm actually going to make a note because it would probably be good to set up a um, one of these Q and A's like this with one of our last uh, last hiring because they did attend the uh, State Air Patrol Academy. So I'm going to make a note of that and we can set something up to where you can pick their brains. But to, to finish out the thought process on the cadet program, so if you're a commissioned officer and we hire you in, once you go to the field, you will start your FTO program and you will work the schedule of the same as your FTO. So if they're scheduled uh, eight to four every day, that's going to be your schedule. So not knowing where you're going to go, it's kind of hard to answer it um, if you're going to the field. 
So what is the expected starting salary? So I'm going to switch switch screens here real quick and I'm going to pull that up. So when you start out as a cadet, you are going to start out at $19.88 per hour. Upon successful completion of the academy, you will go to $24.91. Now, because this is a cadet hiring, if you're a commissioned officer, you still start at that 1988, even though you are not attending the academy. If we were hiring commissioned officers, you would come in at the higher rate, pay range 11, step one, which is the 2491. But even if you're commissioned, because the posting is for a cadet, you start at 1988. So what is the best advice you can give to someone who is unsure about their career? I really want to do this field, but I don't want to waste college years and not likely get hired. Well, that's a good question. So if it's a career path that you are interested in, I would recommend that you reach out to one of your local facilities and go talk to that local lieutenant and go talk to some of those officers. Um, I think if you sit down and pick their brains one on one as to what they do on a day to day basis, um, I think it'll give you a little better understanding of, of what we do. Um, and I don't think any any time in college is is a waste. So even if you start pursuing, you know, a degree in natural resources or a degree in criminal justice. Um, and you decide a year in that that's not for you, you know, a lot of those courses you can then shift and go towards um, that topic that you're more interested in. Um, do you have a recruiting class each year or only as needed? Good question. So we were, uh, we, we played catch up last year and I think we hired um, 31 officers um, from the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020. This year we're hiring 15. So we are catching up and stabilizing our numbers. So moving forward, we are going to look at hiring every fall. Um, it might be three officers, it might be five, it might be 10. Uh, not knowing attrition rates moving forward, um, you know, how many people are going to retire, somebody might accept another position. Um, it's hard to say. But to answer your question, yes, we're looking at hiring yearly moving forward. Do you know when the start date of selected employees would be? I graduated from college this spring and would like to start full time after graduation, but would work part time up until graduation. OK, good question. So what we're looking at right now is and it's kind of dependent on the Ohio State Highway Patrol with uh, the Ohio State Fair. So the State Patrol, if you're not aware, they have a huge presence at the Ohio State Fair. So right now we are planning on a late August start date of the Academy, which would be, I believe, August 23rd. So if the State Fair ends up being canceled due to COVID, that date will likely get moved to the beginning of August. So you would have an onboarding date of roughly June to, um, or I'm sorry, July to August. Now, if you're looking for something um, to start this spring, please send me an email, call me, because I know we are looking for interns right now. So that might be a good option to you for you to get your foot in and do some internship work. So question is, what would be what what would the qualifications be for the utilization of an agency take home vehicle? So good question. It's not necessarily qualifications. It is um, a lot of our areas have satellite facilities. So as an example, um, using Deer Creek State Park, you know, AW and Marion is a you know satellite facility. So if we had an officer that lived close to AW Marion, it would give us the opportunity to allow that officer to take a vehicle home and they'd be able to hit that facility going to and from um, to their main report to location, which would be Deer Creek. That's just one example. So there's not necessarily qualifications per se. Um, it's, it's really what's best for the agency and if it works for the uh, employee. Do all of the cadets train at the State Higher Patrol Academy? And if not, where do you train and how is that determined? So all applicants that do not have their peace officer certification will attend training at the Ohio State Highway Patrol Academy.
If I'm already commissioned and I get hired, do I still have to pass the physical fitness test? Yes, you do. So as mentioned in the presentation, even though you're commissioned, you're being hired as cadet, cadet status, so you'll have to pass it to 30th percentile. Once the cadets that are attending the Sahara Patrol Academy graduate, you will then be required to pass it to 50th percentile. Would this job be accommodating to being a military reservist? Absolutely. We have several, several officers. Um, one just went on one year deployment, I believe starting like a week ago. So yes, we are very accommodating to our military. What would you recommend doing or knowing to prepare for the formal interview? That is a good question. Um, and I would actually encourage you to email me and I can offer you more insight on that because we're still working on um, how we want to actually, you know, set up that interview. I would say be comfortable and over explain things. So I guess what I mean by that is we're looking for content. We're looking for, for character. You know, you're going to have an opportunity um, to put yourself on display. You're going to have an opportunity um, to relay to us your communication skills. So it's important uh, that you're confident and you give us a lot of content. Does achieving Eagle Scout rank play a major role in getting hired? Unfortunately not, but I, I applaud you for, for doing that, but unfortunately it does not. So is there a requirement to remain as an employee after graduating DNR cadet program? If so, how long and what penalty if you leave employment? So good question. So this is actually written into uh, the collective bargaining agreement, and I believe it is two years after graduation, two years. And basically the way it reads is that you would owe us back for any money that we paid for your training. Now, that's not saying we're going to go back and pull every instructor's hourly rate, break it down. No, it's going to be a rough, you know, this is what we paid the patrol for the services to um, for that cadet group, and it'll be broken out that way. But it is two years after uh, graduation. Um, you mentioned this earlier, but when are the letters of acceptance to the academy sent out? Was it April? So let me go back and pull up my timeline. Um, so we would be looking at roughly May, the end of May, beginning of June, you would get a letter letting you know when or if you were selected. So it'd be end of May, beginning of June. So will the interview be in person or other method used? Another great question. So. We actually had a long discussion about this uh, today with Human Resources and with the current numbers of COVID in the state of Ohio, um, we are trying to plan for that situation, which would require us to do some kind of a remote uh, interview. Um, so obviously when I talked about in the presentation, the interview, it was also the swim test that day. So it causes a lot of issues for us if we have to do a remote. That being said, um, we're working on ways if you know somebody doesn't have access to a computer at their home in which they wouldn't be able to do what we're doing now and do a uh, live face to face. Um, we will work with those people, those folks and try to set something up at a local facility for you that has a good Internet connection and you would be on one of our machines um, to accommodate that interview. But yes, we are looking at possibly having to do remote interviews. It's a good question. So how quickly does a cadet advance to officer? OK, so the way it works is while you are in training at the State Higher Patrol Academy, you are in that cadet status for that entire time frame. Once you graduate from the Patrol Academy, which would be roughly probably beginning of January 2022, as soon as you take and pass your state exam, which is typically a week afterwards, you get bumped up to a probationary natural resources officer. Once you're in that probationary status, you 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 get the higher pay. So you go step one, pay range 11, and then you're on probation for one year.
Some very good questions. So question is, if I've interviewed for this position before, can I expect the same types of questions be asked? Not necessarily. We we try to change up the questions. And as I mentioned earlier, that is one of the things we're looking at right now. So no, I would not expect the same questions. So question is, what college did I go to? So I spent a year at Mount Union in Alliance, Ohio. Realized that was not for me and transferred transferred to Hawking College in Nelsonville and graduated from Hawking College with an associates in, I don't even think they offer this degree anymore, but it was Parks and Rec Management with an emphasis in wildlife. So I have an associates from Hawking. How long is the cadet training program? So the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy, if we're going that path, um, I believe it is up to 770 or 780 hours. You will be at the State Highway Patrol Academy um, for roughly, I believe it's five months. So if you're talking um, the FTO period, so if you come in as a commissioned officer, uh, we will have you do NRO specific training for roughly five to six weeks, and then you will start your FTO. FTO um, is very dependent on the location that you work at. And again, um, I say that because, you know, mentioning, you know, the, the Lake Erie units, um, the Ohio River units, some of those vessels they operate, you're not going to get that down in six months. It takes a lot of time um, in the seat to be able to operate a 32 uh, plus foot vessel comfortably in five to six foot waves. So the FTO program itself, it really varies on where you go. So how quickly do you learn if you are invited to a fitness exam after the January 15th application deadline? So we are hoping to have that out to you, or we are striving to have that out to you. I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up my timeline. Um, We want to have that to you by January 20th is, is the deadline we have for ourselves. And I'd like to have it at, as soon as that posting's down because we screen as we go through this process. So, you know, the applications we've gotten now, we're screening them as we go through. So we're going to have a really good idea um, by the time we get to there um, that when that January 20th comes or as soon as January 15th hit, the closing comes down, we're going to have a really good idea of, of who's getting invited. So we want to give you as much time as possible um, to be to get that scheduled out for your fitness. Fitness is one of those spots where we lose a lot of people. Um, so we're we're really trying to do a better job on this hiring to make sure we give a, a, a longer time frame for you folks to get there. So if you have to go to the academy, are you able to go home on the weekends? So yes. So the State Patrol, Patrol um, in general, and again, I think this would be a good, um, a good uh, topic for the future is to have one of our last cadets on here. So our last academy class, um, it was an unfortunate that they went through when they did because what happened was is obviously the academy got shut down for i believe four to six weeks due to covid and then when they came back the academy ended up locking them down from i believe it was the week before memorial day until they graduated so what that meant was i think they got to go home two weekends between when they went back to the academy actually i think it was the beginning of may 
but they got two weekends off um, from that point until they graduated. So, you know, with everything going on right now, um, you know, and the fact that we're not starting until August, I would like to think that, you know, we'll have a better grasp on COVID by then. Um, but in, in normal circumstances, yes, you might be required to stay some weekends, but for the most part, you would have your weekends off to go see your family or just decompress for the weekend. Is there a minimum amount of experience on boats that you're looking for as far as operating in order to be accepted? No. So we don't have a minimum qualification as it relates to boating experience. So I can tell you that um, we are going to teach you everything you need to know. So just because you don't know how to operate a vessel or maybe you have limited experience, do not let that discourage you um, uh, from applying. Our FTOs are, and, and folks that instruct that are, are excellent and they will get you what you need. Are there physical conditions that would automatically disqualify a person from this position? If you would please email me um, that question and I think it would be better if I put you in contact with human resources um, just so I know exactly what you're asking. So if you would please, whoever wrote that, um, please shoot me an email and I'll be happy to follow up on that for you. Do you plan to have another live event soon where could recent cadet graduates can share how they prepared for fitness interview and how to prepare for the cadet experience? Yes, um, like I said earlier, I made a note of that and um, I think that's gonna be our next topic. And like I said, um, we wanna try to get uh, several of these out from different aspects of the job, you know, cause when you looked at the career ladder, you know, there's a lot of different classifications within the NRO series. So I think it's important that you hear from uh, multiple people. And I think the, uh, you know, the last cadet class, I think that's a really good idea. And I think we'll, we'll prepare for that one. But I would stay tuned to our Facebook um, and however you heard about this event, and we'll get something out to you. For training, is commuting an option or do we need to stay at the academy? So it is an in-residence academy. So if you are attending this Ohio State Higher Patrol Academy, you will be required to stay there overnight. Another good question. Can we expect to take the physical fitness test outdoors or indoors given the time of year? So this has been a struggle. Uh, obviously, we do not want you to try to do a fitness test when it's 10 degrees outside and it could be icy, you know, um, very adverse conditions. So we are trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, we are trying to lock down facilities, uh, indoor facilities for fitness. Um, yeah, we don't want you to, you know, risk injury on trying to run on a snowy track or, or something like that. So yes, we are working to lock down indoor facilities um, uh, for the fitness. So what college courses or programs do you recommend? So good question. Um, it really depends on what career path you want to go down. Um, for me, my career path was, you know, towards that natural resources degree. And when I originally went to Hawking, I guess in the back of my mind, even though I had worked with some park officers, um, I was still kind of drawn to uh, the wildlife aspect of the job. And so that was the, the the path I was going was um, got my degree, um, did you know the the emphasis on the wildlife portion, and then got the academy afterwards. And you know it was really the academy and working at Mohican, um, you know, on the maintenance crew that kind of drew me more towards you know the division of parks at the time, which is now Parks and Watercraft. So as far as the college courses go, I would say you know 
depending on which direction you want to go, if you like the criminal justice field more, um, as opposed to the natural resources field, um, either one is going to set you up for success with us or the Division of Wildlife, um, you know, really where you wherever you want to go. It's, I should say it's going to set you up for success if you want a career in natural resources um, law, uh, law enforcement. So it, yeah, if you are more interested in wildlife, um, if you want to send me an email, um, I can give your contact information to my counterpart, which is Mr. Jim Quinlivan, um, and he can answer any questions you have, you know, as it relates to that career path, you know, the Division of Wildlife. So yeah, if you want to, if you want to shoot me an email with your contact information, I'm more than happy um, to put you in contact with the person that can help you. Great, I'm glad to hear that um, you're meeting up with somebody in Northwest. That's that's great. Thank you. Well, folks, we're coming up on uh, 1800 hours. Um, it seems like some of the questions have slowed down a little bit. Um, but again, if you know, I think I've said this, I sound like a broken record at this point. Um, but you know, my my contact information is still up um, and I'm I'm more than happy to help you with any questions you have. And like I said, um, you know, if you're more interested in the Division of Wildlife and you happen to miss their presentation, I believe you can find a link to that on YouTube. Uh, but if you email me, I'm more than happy to put you in contact with uh, Mr. Jim Quinlevin as well. Um, but as I said, I appreciate everybody uh, joining us tonight and I look forward to hearing from you all. And hopefully you folks, uh, I'll get to see you at interviews and fitness. But I appreciate all of your time and um, we looks like we got about a minute. And I'm going to leave it open in, until top of the hour here. But again, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's much appreciated. All right, folks, we're at the top of the hour. So again, I thank you and yeah, please, please reach out if I can help you with anything. Oh, uh, question just came in. I've just graduated high school and I'm an Eagle Scout. Where do you recommend that I start my path to becoming an officer? So good question. Um, so if you're more interested in the criminal justice side of it, I would, depending on where you're from, um, I would look at your regional colleges. So if you have a community college, um, or, or something that offers a criminal justice program, uh, pursue it that way. If you're more interested in the natural resources field, again, depending on where you're from, look at Hawking College, Ohio State, Rio Grande, one of those that offer that degree in the, the NR field. Um, it really just depends on which path you want to go down. So if I, I mean, I guess if you are more interested in the law enforcement aspect of the job, I would pursue the criminal justice degree. If, if it's more of a balance for you, I would pursue the natural resources degree. So it really depends on, on which direction you want to go. All right, folks. Well, I again, I thank you for tuning in and I'm going to sign off here. It is 601.
So again, I thank you and have a, a great night and a great rest of your week. Goodbye, everyone.